a reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, this is the message we have heard from Jesus Christ and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not live according to the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will give and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing this to you so that you may not sin, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the expiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus declared, I thank thee, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hidden these things from the wise and understanding, and revealed them to babes. Yea, Father, for such was thy gracious will. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and any one to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. We celebrate today one of my favorite saints, St. Saint Catherine of Siena. I was introduced to her as a young priest. I kind of heard of her, but it was only when I was on a pastoral assignment in my first year of priesthood um, in upstate New York, and I used to have to drive between two parishes, and I was listening to the extended version of uh, the biography of her life, <clears throat> and I was just really struck by everything that went on in her life, you know, so many miracles, so many different graces, so much influence that she held in the church, um, not quite single-handedly, but to a large extent bringing that unity at a time of, of great division. Um, and then also all of the different favors that were granted to her because of the effectiveness of her ministry. And so this gospel today is rightly chosen for St. Catherine of Siena, which is that the Lord in this scene from Matthew's gospel he has just been rebuking all of those who do not believe, but after that, he kind of turns his heart towards heaven to his Father, and now it says, it says he declared or he uttered from within himself this word of praise to the Heavenly Father. So it is this deep joy that he has, despite the pain that he takes in those who do not believe, the rejoicing that he has in his saints is even greater, right? And so from within himself, he turns to the Father and he gives thanks. And he gives thanks that the Father has hidden these things from the wise and the prudent. Now those words there mean specifically prudent and wise in terms of earthly standards. So wisdom is when we order all things according to one principle. And if we are wise in earthly standards, it might mean that we have a temporal goal, something that we want, but it's only on earth. And then what we do is we order all of our life towards that one temporal thing. And that's wisdom in a certain sense, but it's only earthly wisdom. Heavenly wisdom is when that one central thing moves off of the face of the earth and sits in heaven and it is God himself. And then we order our life towards God and that's when we receive that heavenly wisdom. And so the wisdom that the Lord is speaking of here is earthly wisdom. And that those who desire earthly things, the things of heaven are in a certain sense hidden from them because they have closed off their hearts to the things of heaven and they seek the things of earth. And so the Lord says, but thus is thy gracious will. And then he says, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. And we might think, well, that seems quite limiting. But immediately after this, the Lord extends a universal invitation. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. Come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden. And that laboring and that heavy burden, they represent the life under the old law. They represent a life without grace. It is a laboring without rest. It is a laboring without being able to attain the thing that we are called to, which is eternal life. And the burden is sin. And so what the Lord does first is he gives the diagnosis. We have to acknowledge that we are sick and that we are unable to attain the end that we are called to. We are, have to acknowledge that we are in need of a savior. Like if we went to a doctor, we get diagnosis first and then medication. 
So also when we come to Christ, we have to be diagnosed and accept the diagnosis first. We are weak and sinful, but the medication is at hand, Christ himself. St. Catherine of Siena, she had a very powerful grace of self-knowledge. She saw herself and she said, I am the worst of sinners and my sins are what is causing most of the troubles on the face of the earth. And we might think that that's just someone who's really pious, you know, saying these pious things that don't mean anything. But she deeply was convicted of her sinfulness, and yet she did not despair of God's mercy. She knew God's mercy. And because she experienced it, she was able to extend that mercy to others, to speak to them of his mercy and that need for reconciliation. She was so effective in that ministry that the Pope allowed for there to be a whole group of priests that would follow her just to hear all of the confessions of the people that heard her speak or that she encountered. And they were hearing confessions sometimes for hours and hours and hours every day. And it would tire out the priests, but she would continue. But then also in St. Catherine, what we have is something also very beautiful, which her spiritual director has in his book on her life. And it's a chapter that speaks about her love for the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. So of all the things in her life, he kind of finishes it with this great pinnacle of her life, which is the Lord in the Eucharist. And her love for the Lord in the Eucharist was so intense, and she desired to be united with, with him so much that she would receive communion almost daily, which was unheard of at that time. And so that scandalized many people. But the Pope, it was Pope, I think, Gregory XI, what he issued was a papal bull, and he gave permission for her to have communion not only every day, but whenever she wanted. A papal bull that came from Rome that had a priest that would accompany her with a temporary altar, specifically so that she could have mass whenever and wherever she wanted. And so she would live for the Eucharist and from the Eucharist. There are many accounts that would say that when she would kneel down for Holy Communion, the desire was so great that people would see the host fly from the priest's fingers and into her mouth. The Lord so desired to be with the, love, with the one who loved him so intensely. She would also then, the majority of, I would say, 95% of her ecstasies would take place after receiving Holy Communion. And she would remain in ecstasy for three to four hours almost every time. And now we might think that's beautiful, but it used to annoy some people back in the day, right? Because especially the people who had to lock up the churches. And so what they would want is that she didn't come to the evening mass or a mass late in the day because they didn't want her to be there for hours. They wanted to be able to lock up. And so she came the one day and they told her specifically, you're not allowed to receive Holy Communion today. And so in humility, she knelt at the back of the church, but one of the priests, it actually ended up being her spiritual director, was offering, commun was offering mass up in the top corner of the church and he didn't even know she was there. And when he was fracturing the Blessed Sacrament at that moment in the Mass, one of the fractured pieces kind of just simply dropped off and he didn't know where it went. And it had flown all the way from the, t from the altar and she had been able to receive Holy Communion. And afterwards, when he asked her what had happened, she says, the Lord brought it to me when no one else would. The Lord brought himself to me when no one else would because I asked him. And so that was this beautiful, intense love that she had for the Lord and the Eucharist. This desire for daily communion, knowing that it was better to receive Holy Communion more often than less often, obviously in a state of grace and with the right disposition and with reverence. But this was the central point of her life. She was sustained by Christ in all of her burdens and all of her sufferings. She came to the Lord as one who was heavy laden and burdened and he gave her rest, and she found that rest in the ecstasies of, of, of that post-Holy Communion union with the Lord Jesus. And the last thing that the Lord says in the Gospel today, he says, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. St. Thomas Aquinas has a very beautiful commentary on this line. He says, every suffering and every difficulty is made lighter by love even though our sufferings might, from their exterior perspective, not change. From the interior, when we are filled with love, every burden becomes lighter. We can do the same things, but when we do them for love, they no longer have the same weight. And so St. Catherine of Siena as well, 
And if you look at her life, by the age of 33, she was so withered away and so spent that she appeared to be an old woman. She was so, again, spent, she had spent herself so gladly for Christ, suffered so many things for Christ, because she was filled with his love. Amen.